Hey, I'm Mac, welcome back to my channel. So this video is a submission. The video in question is from the Virtual Event Influencer Summit, which is put on by Brendan Burchard, and it was also done in collaboration with Boss Babe. Now, both of these figures, Boss Babe, the organization, and uh, Brendan Burchard, are sort of motivational speaker, rah, 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 a business coach, scammers who basically scam other scammers like MLM participants or um, people who have those like click funnel websites where they charge you a bunch of money for a PDF that's essentially worthless <laughs> and then they upsell you a bunch of things along the way um, for those kind of people. So that's basically who this is targeted at, even though they're calling it Influencer Summit. I wouldn't really call those people influencers, but I guess they're not going to call it Scammer Summit, so... <laughs> And now it's being put on for free, which is important to note because that might sound like a losing proposition when Eric Worre is charging hundreds to thousands of dollars for a similar um, experience with his GoPro event. However, you have to remember that all self-help, or at least the vast majority of it, is essentially designed not necessarily to help you out, but rather to sell you the next product from the from the author or the speaker or whoever. So this is the same kind of deal. The, they're not going to give any information. What they're going to do is they're going to create the impression that they have a lot of information and that they're that they're that they just haven't given you the keys yet. And and if you just buy their product or you know their book, their their courses online, then then you, then it'll all be so clear. You you just need to buy their course or their or their next book or whatever, and then you'll get it. Like it's it's just out of reach, okay? But it's always going to be out of reach, and it's always going to be the next book. You do it because, as we all know, um, any influencer that you admire, if you ask them, you know, hey, how did you? uh get to where you are they're definitely going to tell you um i took a course on it you know that's that's definitely going to be their answer for 100 percent 100 percent of the time absolutely i i remember my first course <laughs> let's go Bouchard. He's one of the most successful coaches in the world today. Brendan is a New York Times best-selling author whose videos have been viewed over a hundred million times online. He consults and coaches people like Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Huffington, Usher, and many, many more. He is the top 100 most followed public figures on Facebook with over 10 million fans. Two million students, myself being one of the introduction clowns, and taking one of his online courses. And there are tens of thousands of people who have taken his live seminars all around. He's my son, 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 he's my I'm so honored to have you here today. We have three incredible days for you to learn how do you find your passion? How do you get your message out there? How do you reach more people? How do you actually have fun doing all this stuff that we talk about on social media, about creating content, finding clients, getting brand deals, launching a podcast or a YouTube show, or going live from your home or your laptop? How do you do all this? For those who are new, I didn't always used to have a studio. I'm at my friend Dean's studio right now. I just would go. Is this the, is this the same studio as GoPro's studio for or, uh, for uh, Eric uh, Eric Worre? Or is this a different one? I have no idea because it's like the exact same setup. All the grifters, they just they just converge, you know, uh, convergent evolution. The answer to how you create a video or go live or whatever, I, you just go to YouTube and then click on the question mark, man. It's not that difficult. Go live on this thing all the time. 
right? Or I'd go live on this thing all the time. But here we are in this opportunity moment where you can go live, where you can teach, you can create courses, you can do coaching, you can do live events, you can sell subscriptions, and you have an opportunity like you've never had before to reach so many people. But the ultimate question is, why do so many people see this industry and they never get in or they never break through? What's the difference between the people who seem to just start and in that first year or two, you see them building that social media following, getting online sales, like watching their brand blow up and all of a sudden people are reaching out to them. They're getting the clients, they're getting the corporate deals, they're getting the sponsors, they're getting the ad revenue. And others, it's year after year after year of watching but not participating. Being the consumer, not the creator. Being the person who's always being at the whim of everybody else or following everybody else, but not doing your thing. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that the people who find success probably didn't start off selling products. They probably built an audience with content that people actually wanted to watch and then they were able to monetize that by selling products via their their content that people want to watch. They didn't just start off selling. That's why. And it's also a lot of luck. In the way that brings you joy, that earns for you and your family, that helps you feel like, God, this is part of who I am and wh what I love to do. What's that difference? You're going to learn that right here in Influencer Summit. We've got three days of incredible programming for you. It's free. You can invite your friends at InfluencerSummit.com to join. Okay, this room is empty. There's no one applauding or cheering. That's all fake. And register. This is a free event, but we're not going to treat it like one. We're going to treat this event like you paid $1,000 for this event. I mean, GoPro from Eric Worre was $1,000, and this it was basically the exact same. So I guess that's true. Matter of fact, most of you know, we sell the replays later on. Well, see, there you go. That's kind of bullshit. You know, if there were anything in here that were actually worth recording, you could just screen record it, or you could probably use, um, you could probably use Inspect Element under the developer tools to see like what the, um, actual URL of the video is. There's a number of ways you can put that into the command line to download it. But anyway, there's possibilities, okay? You don't gotta pay for replays. But you're here, you're here live, and you're gonna get the benefit of learning from people. Every single speaker we have for you the next three days earns over seven figures a year doing this. All okay. All millionaire content creators, all millionaire podcasters, YouTubers, writers, teachers, coaches. Some of these people you meet, they've got, you know, they've got a studio somewhere or they're just doing it on their phone. Some of them have a... What? You can record video on your phone? A million on TikTok? And some of them don't even log in on TikTok, so... What is this, TikTok? <laughs> only do email marketing, some of them do webinars, some of them I really believe will show you new ways to monetize your passion and your content like you've never heard before. And here's why I love this. I highly doubt that. Because you just have to find your own way. You know, it's kind of like you walk into a restaurant, there's a menu of all those things that you can order. Well, the influencer industry is like that whether you call it the knowledge economy, the creator economy, the influencer economy, whatever you call it, we're all the same. We all- No, we're not. Are trying to figure out how do we share something about our lives and our passions or expertise, and how do we build an audience, make an impact and get paid for it? Whether you're a coach, that's the same thing, right? You're trying to do something that you're passionate about, but you gotta build an audience, you gotta get paid for it. Or if you're somebody who's building that YouTube show and you've been excited about that for years and you're like, oh, I really want to finally get paid at that. Same thing, you, you got to find. Okay, so this is how you know that this is not for people who are actually creating like a YouTube show because it's, it's pretty easy to figure out how to get paid for it. It's The hard part is you have to get over uh, a thousand subscribers. That's the hard part. It's, it's fairly straightforward how you get paid for it once you meet those requirements. 
Like you sign up for the partner program, you can put ads, you could create a Patreon, you could, you know, get sponsorships, you could approach brands, you could wait for them to come to you. Like it's, it's not difficult to figure out how to monetize it. It's difficult to uh, satisfy the criteria that you need uh, in order to monetize it. And that's just going to be a function of persistence, of having good content, a little bit of luck, and just you know just keep just just keep going until something happens for you <laughs> and uh seo and all that kind of thing so like i don't know like he's tr obviously he's going to try to make it sound like it's more complicated than it is because he's got courses to sell you and books to sell you find the audience you got to build and cultivate that audience with great value and then you got to get paid but so many people struggle with this, and that is why we are here today. This morning, I'm gonna use my session to share a little bit about the simple breakthroughs that helped me along the way. And I think that these sort of psychological lessons and strategic choices might help you make a decision. It might help you go, oh, that's what I wanna do now. Because as you enter this next phase of your life, my only offer to you today, my only suggestion to you today, is find out something that is truly sharing your passions, activating your creativity, and earning for you and your family the levels that you desire at this stage of your life, because maybe it changed. Maybe it was okay you only reached that many people or earned that much more money or, or you did that the last decades of your life. Maybe this next year you decide, you know, I wanna reach more people or I wanna try this thing or I wanna write that book or finally get a coaching client or do this stuff I see online. The good news is none of this is out of your reach. And if we can get you in that mindset that this is all about that good old fashioned thing in marketing, experimenting, testing, trying, staying consistent, adding value to people, you win, you win. You know, I'm, I'm what, 16 years full time in this industry now. You know, I was one of those people who started back when, you know, when you sold an online course at the very beginning, the number one refund was because people would take two and a half hours to watch a 10 minute video because the buffer speed on the internet was so slow. It's like, I was one of those people who, when I launched an online book and I did it online, instead of doing a big, you know, tour, where they used to have these book tours where you do a media tour and you visit all these cities, I just did it online and became a number one New York Times bestselling author. The whole industry, the book industry was like, wait, what's this, what's this internet thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. The publishing industry had just never heard of the internet. They were like, the internet, what is that? <sighs> um, okay, well, see, here's the thing. Grifters are always gonna be some of the earliest adopters of a new platform or a new um, technology because the lack of knowledge on the part of the general public, you know, with a new with any new technology is something that they can exploit because people will be confused. They might not know the intricacies of of this new platform, this new technology. So, I mean, yeah. Grifters are always some of the first, you know, early adopters of something. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's how old I am. <laughs> so I started, for those who don't know my career, I started my career out of inspiration because I was somebody who went through transformation. Sometimes that's how we all begin this. Something happened in your life that inspired you to want to give back or help other people. And for me, that happened way long ago. When I was a 19-year-old kid, I had a breakup with the first woman I ever loved. She was my high school sweetheart. And she went outside the relationship. And I, being a young man, uh, without a lot of really exposure to the world and really no exposure to personal development, I didn't have the emotional tools to deal with that. Right, because personal development is definitely the tool set that you need to deal with that. I, like, <laughs> someone's like, oh, you know, my girlfriend cheated on me and, you know, the relationship's just over. I'm like, well, have you read, you know, when f f how to win friends and influence people or whatever that book is? <laughs>
<laughs> you need the five second rule. <laughs> so I fell apart. I became um, not just sad, but eventually depressed, then into suicidal ideation and suicidal planning. And fortunately, I was in a car accident not too long after planning all of this, and that car accident taught me I actually didn't want to die. I did. I okay, well, I was in a very, very nearly fatal car accident at 19 as well. And I would never, ever, ever in a million years say that it was fortunate that I was in that car accident. It, it was fortunate that I was about five inches from, from what would have been certainly a fatality, but I would never say that it was fortunate that the accident happened. I, I, I much would have preferred it not to happen. <laughs> really ridiculous. Are we saying that car crashes cure depression and suicidal ideation? Okay. I, what? I wanted to live but I didn't know how. Okay, you know what else might have been able to help you realize that? Like a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist or you know any combination of those? I, I thought I wanted to take my life because I didn't know how to live a life. I, I didn't know how to be happy. I, I didn't know how to enjoy the moment. There's always a sob story. See how we're in the sob story here with all of these grifters, with these, whether it's MLM, whether it's this, you know, scam course sales thing where it's basically a pyramid scheme because the the whole course is about how to sell courses to people who want to sell courses right because it's the same kind of format it's a it's the bigger fool chain you're always trying to sell to a bigger fool it's selling shovels in the gold rush right it and <laughs> They always, always, always have a sob story. They can never just open and just talk normally about their product or what they have on offer. No, like it has to be like, oh, I was so in such a bad place. And like the, all the worst things were happening to me. And then I found this thing and now my life is awesome. Okay. It's, it's very, it's very emotionally manipulative. I didn't know how to sense any fulfillment. I didn't know how to look outside by myself, and I certainly didn't know how to manage my emotions or my feelings. Anyone ever been in any of those places before? Where you're like, why? What is wrong with me? Why, why can't I feel happy and joyous? And what's going on? And I just didn't know how. And if you don't know me, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a dorky kid. I'm a, I'm a bookish kid. You're not a kid. So I turned to books and I started reading on philosophy and psychology and then sociology and then human behavior change. Anything I could do to understand how do I become happier? How do I figure out how to be a sane, happy and fulfilled man? And that took me on a two decade journey. I feel like that's one of those you can only choose two things. <laughs> in personal development. And fortunately along the way, I started really understanding that all these people I was learning from, that they were just regular people, you know? How many of you have a, a bookshelf with multiple books from one person? Like you bought one person's books, like you bought all their books, like you just got all of them. Like if you came out, I, I got books and books and books and books and books. I've read a book a week for 20 years and I've only missed maybe three or four weeks when I was in a hospital. And so I'm a bookish kid, like I told you. Well, I used to think when I started reading those books on psychology or philosophy or self-improvement or spirituality, that these people, you know, they were, um, you know, they were different than me. And I know many people do that now too. You think the people that you see on- Why do I feel like self-improvement is probably overrepresented on that bookshelf? Because each book is, uh, is just designed to get you to need to buy the next book. It's not designed to get you to your goal. It's designed to make you feel like you need their next book. And there's just always an endless supply of these books coming out that they can sell you. So it's pretty easy to read like one book a week and still have plenty of self-improvement to read. Okay, because it's just a bunch of garbage designed to get you to buy more books. That's it. And consume more of their content, watch their videos, all that shit. That's all it is. It's, it's such a, it's, it's, it's kind of an addictive drug almost in a way, in my opinion.
on Instagram who have a million fans on Instagram are so different than you. It's called a follower when it's on Instagram. I mean, not to be pedantic, but this is Influencer Summit. You think that those people who are making a million dollars on YouTube a year, they're so different. You think that the people who you know, have that best-selling book or have a wait list of coaching clients or who live down on the other side of town who might earn more than you, you think there must be so, there's something completely different than you. But what I've always found about successful people in this industry is they learned to take and translate some of that pain, some of those difficult experiences, some of that struggle that they face in their own personal lives. And they took that pain or they took that struggle and something in their weird brain said, I'd like to help people not go through that. Oh, please. Nobody is not going to go through something just because they sold, because you scammed them into taking a course on how to be an influencer. Okay. I I hate when they do this shit, when they try to pull this. This like, oh, we're such givers. Something in their heart or their spirit said, let me utilize my life's experience to empower people in some way. What experience are you talking about? The only experience that you have is being a scammy coach selling courses about how coaches can sell courses. You've never had any success prior to that. All your success is in personal development and little scam online courses. So uh, what are you talking about when you say life experience? You don't have any real life experience other than this. Now, some people, their life's experience was just, hey, this was, they were doing a hobby. They loved this thing. They wanted to create and share and generate. They were just, they were a creator by impulse and by heart. That wasn't me. This talking to you was an incredibly uncomfortable awful thing when I began, right? Well, I would say that if you're not the thing that he just described, then it's probably maybe just not the thing for you because it's always going to be like pulling teeth because you're not into it. You're not passionate about it. That's going to show. Now you all see me. I've had the blessing. This year, I finally crossed a personal milestone. I, I've keynoted every major arena in North America now. And I mean, these are arenas like usually you've had 5,000 people or more. So I've keynoted everywhere now. I've had, you know, I've had all the blessings that I wanted in my personal life. Because at the beginning, I didn't want to communicate like this. I want to be really clear to those who are here. What is the definition of arena here? You're like, but Brendan, I'm an introvert. I can't make my money. I, I don't like people. I'm like, uh, I get that. That was me too. The good news is at some point you choose whether or not what is comfortable for you in communication is going to limit you from impact. God, this makes me so mad when they do this. If you are not the kind of person who enjoys talking to and, and persuading and uh, you know just generally interacting and meeting new people all the time, if, if it's if you are having difficulty with some, you know, social aspect of of a job that you're thinking about uh, trying out or whatever, it's it's probably not going to get less miserable for you. That's just the way it is. It might get a little bit easier, but it's still going to be like pulling teeth for you every single time. Like if I had to do, if I had to, for example, make phone calls as part of my job, if I had to do that and it was like a core function of my job, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. And no amount of practicing it or, you know, getting comfortable with it or whatever would would make me less miserable making those phone calls. Like, I, I, like I, that's just not who I am. And you know what? That's okay. I don't have to force myself to be something that I'm not to be successful in something or to be successful in something that I want to do. I just don't have to. There are other opportunities. There are other things I can do. And I just think that it's a lot more productive when you are this kind of person. Like, because I get it. Like, that's how I am. That's why I don't do a job where I have to make phone calls or whatever, what have you, or sell to people. I would be a terrible salesman. Um, 
that, and that's why I don't do those jobs. <laughs> you know, it's just more productive to accept yourself as you are because that's a pretty deep seated thing. It's not I don't think that that's something that you can really change. You can you can get better at social interaction and you can get better at uh, persuasiveness. You you know, you can get better at all of those things, but you can't change like the degree to which um, those things are just exhausting to you or unappealing to you. Like that's just kind of a I think that's more of an intrinsic kind of quality and you'll just be better off for not fighting it. <laughs> Because at some point you say, maybe the reason I'm not starting isn't because I'm an introvert, but it's because I'm afraid to be seen starting small. I'm embarrassed what my neighbor will think. I'm embarrassed what my team will think, my friends will think, my family. Well, if you're starting small, your neighbor's probably not going to see it unless you link them to it. Family will think, so why put myself out there? They'll see me put my content up, they won't like it. They'll see me offer this thing, and they'll say, you're never gonna make money at that. And you shame yourself, embarrass yourself, or pause yourself from getting going. And that was me. When I started this industry, all I wanted to do was write. Because remember all those books I read? I wanted to write a book. I didn't know how to write a book. So what I do? I bought courses on how to write books. I went to conferences on how to publish books. I just started educating myself and started learning how to do it. And then I just decided to do it. I started writing a book, but I couldn't get it done. I couldn't finish it because I just, I don't think I was fully into it yet. And I kept writing and writing. Finally, I pushed, pushed the book out. It didn't do that well. I got frustrated. I said, I need to learn marketing. Why? I have a book out and no one's buying it. I need to learn to have more influence with the audience in advance, so when I come out with something, they'll say, oh, yeah, I like this person. He's added so much value. Of course I'll like his book. That a lot of your sales are like that. If you're not earning... Man, if you're viewing the, the, the degree to which your content is something that your audience likes, if you're saying that that's marketing, that's kind of sad. That kind of suggests that maybe you're in the wrong kind of field. I don't know. Earning what you're what are you wanting to earn? It's because in advance, you're not adding enough value. You're not having the awareness and the value that you need to sell the thing. And if you do add the value and you do go to sell the thing and it doesn't work, we just have to teach you to sell the thing way better. Anyone else need to learn how to sell the thing way better? <laughs> you know, you've got the web page, you've got the thing up, you even put the podcast up, you went through all the, the work to put the book out of the thing and then it didn't sell and you're like, why? Well, this week you're going to learn how to do marketing and sales better. And I say that with great confidence because some of you know the story from the first book that didn't work to six best-selling books, three New York Times, number one New York Times, number one USA Today, number one Amazon. And then I actually started getting going. Then, now as you watch me today, I've, most of you all know, if you're familiar with my brand, 20 blockbuster online courses. All of them earned over a million dollars. You know, a who's who of a wait list of coaching clients who I never even imagined. Many of the people I coach, I read their books. Wow, it's the canned applause for me. Guys, just imagine if only you um, were more like Brendan here, you too could, you know, have millions of dollars that you made by scamming people and be standing in an empty room with canned applause and laughter as you try to hype up a bunch of webcams staring at you. Mm -hmm. As you just put out torrents and torrents of useless, meaningless drivel that never helped anyone. Or I went to their seminar. I never imagined I'd get to talk to all of you in this way, in this format. And so I hope, if anything, that you'll say, all right, maybe this guy's got something to share with me because he's been through it. Nope, not even maybe. And if I'm not your guy, that's okay too because we've got all these famous speakers coming in the Influencer Summit, beaming in or showing up in the studio to walk you through how did they find their voice? How did they get over themselves? How did they start? 
Because for everyone here, who's, if you're wondering why you aren't earning more, I've got this white, and share with you why you're not probably reaching as many people as you could. Or you might not be earning what you could. You're not probably reaching as many people. I'm going to walk you through a simple framework this morning and share with you why you're not probably reaching as many people as you could. Or you might not be earning what you could. And it's not out of a judgmental position, and it's not out of a privileged position. It's out of something that we all have to learn in the industry. And it also explains, for those of you who are coaches or you geek out about human behavior change, why don't people break through? It's the same. It's in this industry. It's in your industry. It's in my topic. It's in your topic. Whatever we do in life, it's the same reason most people don't break through. It's almost always the same. So let's walk through a little framework. This will help you gauge where you're at, but also I'm going to use it as a simple way to kind of explain where my breakthroughs came from because everybody's like, oh, well, you're so lucky. And I'm like, totally. And these things also happened along the way. And these things I did along the way seem to work. And so we'll share with you some of those this morning and we'll jump in. I want to let you know, everyone watching here today will be co-hosting this event with Boss Babes, Natalie Ellis, Danielle Canty. If you love them, give them a shout out. I'm so excited for them. They'll be joining us later today and tomorrow. Once again, fake applause. I mean, you know, the first time they did this, it was for the pandemic, but then then they realized that people will still go to these things if they're virtual. And that's gotta be so much cheaper in terms of the expenses. We also are so blessed to be here today, supported by Kajabi. Uh, if you're an influencer, if you went to any of our web pages, you opened up our emails, you're watching this on a web page right now, or this broadcast is happening free for the entire world, Kajabi is our partner and our sponsor today. We appreciate them. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, I've built my entire brand and career on Kajabi the last decade, and uh, it's still the very tool. Like literally, uh, you can ask the team here, 10 minutes before we went live, we were tweaking the web pages, we were sending emails, we were gearing stuff up, and still using Kajabi for that. Pretty cool, huh? Um, Do you all hear that ding ding? Is that you guys? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's them acknowledging me, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, that, in Montana, that means dinner time. I don't know what, we got cowbells and dinner bells in Montana. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of, <laughs> I'm going to share with you this little framework that will explain what will help you break through and maybe where you got stuck. Here is everyone's path to greater success, but also the barriers they face. Why don't most people succeed more? Well, the number one reason is out of a lack of awareness. Awareness, meaning this is awareness to possibility. Why don't more people have big dreams? Maybe they've never seen anybody do that before. You ever think about that? We get so judgmental in the creator economy or the influencer economy. Well, why doesn't she have this? Or why doesn't he have that? Or why he isn't doing that? They probably don't know they should do that. They don't have awareness to it. They, they never had somebody do that before. In the town, in a place that I grew up, one of the reasons I had so many emotional struggles growing up is because the place, the community that I grew up in, very few men expressed their emotions outwardly. You know, they'd stand very stoically, and if you got in trouble, they'd smack you. And that was about my entire life growing up. Oh, oh, see, uh, where I grew up um, was completely different. And by completely different, I mean exactly that, because I, too, grew up in America, um, around America's toxic masculinity. Okay, that's not unique to you, buddy boy. Also, I find that it is, it's very, if some behavior is, you know, a problem, I find that it is very rare that the issue is a knowledge issue. It's usually something else. There wasn't a lot of, I would say, emotional availability, mental or physical presence. There wasn't joy and fulfillment. I didn't see a lot of that outside of just my own family, just didn't see it in the neighborhoods. 
There was no person. I never knew that there was such a thing as a millionaire until college. You were kind of dumb then. I mean, were you not paying attention? Like, I mean, they cover, um, I mean, you should have run across that concept at some point when uh, you were covering the Great Depression or the, um, the Roaring Twenties. Those would have been times where the concept of a millionaire would have been part of your curriculum. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, and it's probably also in a lot of songs. I, I don't know what to say then. Are you kidding? So, uh, you know, he's saying at the beginning of this that he's a very truthful guy. Well, you're not, you're either not being truthful now or you're an idiot. Like, I never met anybody. I remember we're going to school. There was a kid next to me in college, and I worked three full time jobs in school. And for all the years of college. Well, I remember the first year there, I get... Yeah, um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that's impossible to work. Is he saying he worked three full-time jobs at the same time? Because that would be 120 hours a week. There's 168 hours total in a week. So I don't know when you would go to class and sleep, but uh, maybe you worked three jobs, but they were not three full-time jobs. Most, most full-time jobs will not hire you if you have another full-time job. They might hire you if you have another part-time job, but not if you have another full-time job. You can usually only have one full-time job at a time. Usually, if you have a full-time job and you don't tell them that you have another full-time job, like, you're gonna get fired if they find out because you're supposed to only be doing full-time for one place. That's why it's called full-time. So, I, I don't know, either he's exaggerating here, doesn't know what full-time means, or I'm confused about what he was trying to say there. Because if you if he's talking about like three sequential full time jobs, you would think that he would just say, I had a full time job all through college or whatever, or I had full time jobs all through college. I don't know. Three at once. That's that's literally impossible. You, you would have to never sleep, basically, or just skip class all the time <laughs> there. And there's this kid in my dorm. And when he went to college, his parents bought him a car yeah that's i mean that's what rich people do you're gonna you're gonna meet some rich kids at college especially if you go to a private school i mean that's yeah that's that's what rich people do a new car yeah I, again it's, that's i i know that it's like it's infuriating or whatever but yeah that's what rich people do just go just to go to college this blew my mind shit some rich people just get their kids a new car for turning 16. i never met anybody in my lifetime with a new car okay but you knew about the concept of a new car right like i how do you think that used cars come into being do you think that some nebulous force in the universe uses them I mean, like, you must have known about the concept of a new car. <laughs> God. So until then, he didn't know that, that if you earned enough money, you could buy a new car. He just thought that all the cars were always used just all the time. <laughs> all used cars, new cars don't exist. I was 18 years old. I'd never met somebody with a new car. So, the, like, to have... Okay, see, I could see that. I could see never having met someone with a new car. Like, maybe your parents had used cars. You know, maybe your friends had used cars. Because for most people, you know, in high school, if your friends have cars, they're going to be used cars, unless you have rich friends. <laughs> so, yeah, I could see that. But, but just because you don't know anyone who bought a new car doesn't mean that you... <laughs> that doesn't mean that you're unaware that the concept of a new car exists. Like... You would still know it exists. You would just be like, oh, yeah, you can buy a new car, but we can't afford that. Like that would I would think that that would be pretty obvious to be aware of. 
a dream about, you know, having a fancy car or something like that. It wasn't an opportunity. There was no possibility. Sometimes if you don't see it, you can't dream it. Why don't more people change their lives? They don't know there's another potential. It's not that they are unaware of these outcomes or whatever. It's that these outcomes are extremely unlikely and involve substantial risk. Think that the way that they live, the way that they earn, the way that their neighbors, their friends are, that's life. They were never exposed to something bigger. Now the blessing is when you succeed today, and you will succeed if you follow the strategies and influence or something. When you succeed in this industry, you get to share a new possibility for people, a new potential. You get to help people. And my ne mine was never, let me show you my fancy car. You will never see on my personal social media anywhere, here's me in front of a jet or my fancy car or this fancy thing. My stuff has always been, I want to show you the possibility of- Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, isn't that still just showing off? It, it's not that people aren't aware that it is, that, they're, that, that if you have enough money, you can buy a fancy car. People are aware of that. And they're aware that there are opportunities that can earn you that, that amount of money. However, just because those opportunities exist doesn't mean they're available to everybody and it doesn't mean that they are likely to become available. <laughs> you know, it's, there's a point where it's just too risky and it's too unlikely and you're just gonna have to be more practical about things so that you're not wasting a bunch of resources and time on stuff that's just not gonna happen or is just very unlikely to happen. Being more alive, feeling more connected, feeling more fulfilled. I want people to live high-performing emotional lives just as much as they achieve great things. But I wasn't around vibrant people. I wasn't around people who could bring the joy. I wasn't around people who knew what we're talking about here. So sometimes it's just about awareness. And I want you to show an audience a new possibility, a new opportunity, a new belief, a new way. Well, now you know that if you look around in the dumpsters or around the dumpsters, you know, in an office park where perhaps a landlord has thrown a business out out of their building and just, you know, thrown all their shit on the curb, you might be able to find there's it's there's a possibility of finding an expensive chair in good condition or six expensive chairs. Just doing my part to help you. And you also have to be open to that today. I really believe the number one thing that pauses people from succeeding in this industry is a lot of hubris and superiority. They, they, their ego gets the better of them. They think they know everything. I'm still here learning every single day. That's a big piece about this. You have to be open to seeing different opportunities and open to seeing different potentials and possibilities. And that will help inspire some change. Well, with some people, though, they, 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 they'll read it. I know it, I've seen this is possible, but see, they never went out and got instruction. So they never change. They never, ever bought the course, invested in the training program, learned from somebody, got a mentor, followed a path. They had no plan, no strategy. So even though they had the dream, maybe, they never moved forward because they didn't get the how. My one breakthrough in life was getting the how. Like just simple awareness, like, oh, that's how things work? I didn't know that. I'm gonna give you exi exact examples and frameworks for this, by the way, of how I learned these things and how you can apply them in your own career, including how other people taught me how to do marketing and what to sell and how to build the audience. Like how those things happen was life transformative. But many people, including many of you, and don't worry, there's nothing judgmental here. Whenever I say all of you, I usually mean me too. <laughs> so here's what happens though. You might have all this, but there's something here 
that you don't have. And that is the courage to put yourself out there and overcome the two dominant fears you have, right? The two dominant fears that you have, that most people have. The reason they don't succeed in this industry. They don't have the courage, first and foremost, to overcome that fear of change. I don't want to change because I'm comfortable as I am. Change will be hard. Change will be uncomfortable. Right? Change will require me to try new things, get outside my comfort zone. No one wants to break their comfort zone. They say they do, but then when push comes to shove, unless there's a higher level of demand on them, either that's in the internal demand psychologically or external demand, someone saying, hey, go for this. I believe in you. Let's do this. Or you just have to because your back is against the wall and you're broke. All of those were true for me. I only learned how to do marketing in the modern era with online marketing and social media marketing because I was broke. My first book, as I told you, it didn't work. And I was so upset. I spent all this time to write something, build something I believed in. And then when I went to launch it, it didn't work. And I got discouraged. And that also caused the second kind of fear. If the first kind of fear is fear of change, the second kind of fear is fear of rejection and sh okay just because a lot of people don't just because you don't get a lot of sales or a lot of views or whatever that's not rejection rejection would be like if if you got a lot of views and people press the dislike button mostly that's rejection the if, if you don't get a lot of views that's just like well it could be that people didn't click on it but it's probably also a lot of people just didn't even see it like, they just don't know that it exists. Shame and abandonment, meaning fear of judgment by others. Right? We fear change because maybe I'm not enough to handle the demands of the next level. Does this resonate with anyone? The next level? What is this? Heaven's Gate? Maybe I'm not enough to demand. I can't handle the next level. I can't do it. I can't do it. And that is why all these things, listen, even if you have all these things, let's say you have some awareness or a dream, you know what to do, you have some courage. Well, guess what? All of this, you know, the, the denominators under this thing, if you will, is your esteem. Your esteem. Like, do you believe in yourself? Can you see yourself doing that? Will you take a moment to give yourself the permission and the honor and the respect to go after the dreams that you have. That's how you view yourself, value yourself, care for yourself, honor yourself, show up for yourself. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Make a mental note anytime he says anything that is actually something you can apply. Because I haven't heard any yet. It's about you taking the next actions of integrity so you respect yourself. When you go to bed at night, you're like, good job today. I showed up for what I said I was going to show up for. I did what I said I was going to do. I pushed myself a little bit. And many of us don't have that because that fear of change dominated us or that fear of judgment by others dominated us. And we let that drive us. The number one reason I see over and over and over again, the reason people aren't crushing it online with sales or clients or money or audience building or impact or starting movements isn't because they don't have an idea, isn't because there's not instruction all over the internet, isn't because they don't have occasional courage, it's because they don't honestly see themselves there yet. They have not done the personal work of developing and visualizing the identity of who they could be. They only, only view themselves like they viewed themselves when they were in high school or, or they viewed themselves when that person said they were like this or they viewed themselves in that last relationship before the divorce or the heartbreak or they view themselves now when the circumstances suck and the circumstances suck and you confuse the circumstances for your character. You confuse your circumstances for your future. You can... Okay. I will grant that identity is a big part of um, 
big part of human behavior and it's like one of the harder things to overcome when you're trying to change you know a behavior or a habit like you know part of the reason that i run every day is is because i know that it's good for me and i know that i will feel like i did something once i'm done but another reason is also that like i identify as i am the type of guy who runs every day if i don't run every day i will be inconsistent with the expectations people have with what i see my the way that i view myself uh so it it tends to be a real powerful thing when you're identifying as something so, or, or i've seen people that are that i've seen people where they almost identify as someone who can't cook where where it's like they it's it's weird but they 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 don't even just say like oh i'm not very good at cooking they like they're like oh like i can't cook like i that it's like it's like it's their identity kind of and it's like okay uh well yeah and when you think that way you just never even entertain the possibility of like um of trying even to cook or uh or if you're like oh i'm the i if you're like oh like i'm not the kind of person who works out like well you're certainly not going to try it when you're thinking about yourself that way it, it's a very tough thing to shift but if you can strategically use it, I think that that can be a useful framework to think about things. But that's not really what he's going for here. But it kind of sounded like that. Confuse your circumstances for your opportunities. And so many people do that. You think today is real. And uh, yeah, I do think today is real. It's I'm, I don't think I'm hallucinating right now. And that's why you're stuck. Today is a moment, today is a stage, today is a season. But that doesn't mean tomorrow, the next chapter, the next act. Actually, um, today is part of a season. The next stage, the next level, the next potential isn't there for you. It took me a long time to realize that. Because like you, I was asking that ultimate question of esteem, which is, well, who am I? Who am I to go put myself out there? Who am I to write a book? Who am I to write a course on this? Who am I to build a web page? Who am I to help people start in this industry? Who am I to, because there's always someone who is at that next stage. And so you go, oh, they're already doing it. There's too much competition. I'm not as good as them. Why even start? Because, you know, fear of change, it's easier to stay where we're at. That's why another big breakthrough here that really helps, it's not just the esteem, it's also having a community, having people around you who believe in you, support you, cheer you on. It's why you're all here versus just like watching passively somewhere. It's like, wow, wait, we're doing this as a big social summit every single year, right? This is our third or fourth, third year, third, I think third year virtually. And, you know, we used to do this in person you know, 2,600 people in San Diego pre-pandemic. Like, this was fun. We bring the whole community together because so many of us strive alone behind a laptop or a phone, and we forget there's nothing you are doing in your life that is that special. I know that sounds terrible to say, but there's so many people doing exactly what you're trying to do. There's so many people already earning it. The encouragement of your community, the encouragement of the people... Everyone who's coming to speak today is coming to speak today, tomorrow, and the next day for free. For free. What yeah, because it's going to be a great way for them to pitch their courses and their books and all their other products. It's, this is basically an infomercial. See, that's why he hasn't given us any information that's actually something you can apply because he's just going to keep dangling it like he's got some secret information or some you know uh some collection of knowledge that is gonna that is going to make you a successful influencer uh, but he's just dangling it right out of reach and you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to buy it have to buy his course you're gonna have to buy his book you're gonna have to go to the next thing you're gonna have to see the next day of the of this thing you're gonna have to buy the replays you're gonna have to all this shit but he's never gonna give you the answer 
because if he gives you the answer, then it, you will stop consuming his products. Why? Because they know we're developing a community here. Because they know you watching this right now, they were there. In fact, as you know, uh, Boss Babes are co-hosting this with me, and Natalie and Danielle met at one of my events. I didn't even know that for years. I was like, I'm like, wow, you guys are amazing. They hit like a million fans, two million fans. I'm following them there. I have no idea. We get together in a community. I bring the community often together, like the major leaders in the industry. We all get together. And it's like called a mastermind. So we're all, we're all together. And we're going around the table. And I'm just sitting there listening. I'm going, what? what? As they tell the, the group that they met at my seminar. I could not believe it. I mean, it's kind of like in history class, like if you're in European history and uh, you see like the family tree of like one of the royal families and you're just like, there's just way too many connections. <laughs> Even to this day, I'm like, I, I can't believe it. Why? Because they got outside of their houses in different places, came together to learn. They were willing to be open. And something, when you're in the right community, serendipity lines you up with the right people and amazing things happen for you. So be here. Celebrate this. Let's have fun together. Can we have an awesome next three days, ladies and gentlemen? Let's have some fun here. Let's really enjoy this. You are not alone, even if you're watching this alone. I know some... Oh, but you are, though. Some of you are on your phone. I know some of you are you're on your phone or at your home. You're in that room at your house watching this where you hope the kids don't trouble you. Or you're in that particular room where they're just off camera. Or you're in that particular place trying to absorb this and you hope that your family doesn't hear you thinking you're crazy. Why are you watching those people on the internet again? <laughs> Why do you think you can do that? Well, if you are here, you know that you can do this. Your breakthrough is going to be allowing yourself to do this. Your breakthrough is going to be here. I promise you, if you want a success formula, there it is. But that formula is not something that you can, it's not concrete steps you can apply. And he's never going to give you those because that would eliminate the possibility of him selling you more of his products. You need to know what's possible and what is real and what your potential and opportunities are. You need to get some help, instruction, invest in yourself, get the course, get the plan, get the map. You need to have the courage to get beyond your fear of change and beyond your fear of being judged by other people. Because are they going to judge you, yes or no? Are they going to judge you, yes or no? They're going to judge you all the time. They're already judging you. So you might as well do something that brings you great joys, passion, fulfillment, and impact. Right? And you need to start believing in yourself and getting around people who can support you. And you're like, well, I don't have anybody. Then it's your job to build that peer group, to beer, build that community of people. It's your job. All right. Well, I'm fucked. It's your job. I didn't have any of this either. I'll give you some examples today that just blew my mind. Let's talk about like, uh, let's take this first one on. We're gonna take on awareness. All right, I remember exactly the seat that I was sitting in, in the hotel that I was sitting in, at the conference I was sitting in, the day that it happened, I remember the pen I had and the journal that I had. When I was sitting in this conference, I was a young kid trying to write my first book. I'm at a writer's conference, and uh, a gentleman got up on stage, and then another person got up on stage, and another person got up on stage, and another person got up on stage, and they were all talking about how they were taking their ideas or their writing or their teaching, and they were making money online with it. This was so foreign to me. I came there hope I thought it was a writer's conference, so we were just going to learn how to write. But all these guys got up on stage and talked about how to sell the thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't got to that far yet. <laughs> I guess I have to make some money at this thing at some point. Oh, my God. And, but all of them, I remember one guy, he gets up there and says, oh, well, here's what you should do. You should write a PDF. And uh, you should put that PDF up online, and you should sell it for like $20. 
and then you don't ever pay $20 for a PDF file unless it's like a legit book. You should make this online funnel. And then he explained that what his PDF was, was how to give uh, a best man speech. He had like 20 pages of how to give a best man speech at a wedding, right? How to give a best man speech at a wedding. And because men are nervous when they got to give a best man speech at a wedding, they go to Google or they search online how to give best man speech. And they would find his webpage and he'd do marketing. So they come to his page and they'd give him. Okay, uh, here's a tip. Don't put in how to da 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 da. Just look up examples of best man speeches and then you can learn by example. If you, if you type in how to anything on Google, you're gonna get shit like this. $20. So I'm listening to this, I'm writing in my journal. I'm like, oh, that's fascinating, okay. And then he says, yeah, and so, you know, the first time I set it up, you know, uh, you know that first month, like I sold 100 of them. And I was like, wow, 100 of them. At 20 bucks? You're kidding me. You made $2,000 in a month with a PDF? And then he goes on to tell a story. And then it was 100 of them a week. And then it was 100 of them a day. And then it was 100 of them an hour. And then it was 1,000 of them an hour. Uh, well, first of all, it sounds like either he was lying to you, or you're lying to us, or you're really gullible, okay? Because I don't know why he's talking to your ass. I mean, I mean, does no one does no one think about whether the math on these things makes sense? A thousand an hour, really? So here's the thing. Okay, I'm about to misspeak and say four hundred eighty thousand dollars an hour when I meant four hundred eighty thousand dollars a day. Somebody who knows a guaranteed way to make $480,000 in one hour is not going to be fucking around, wasting their time, giving you a seminar and telling you how to do that. They're going to be out doing whatever that thing is, okay? They're just, they're, they're just, that's just the way it is. Someone who knows a guaranteed way to make $480,000 an hour is not going to tell you how to do it. And they're not going to be selling you a course on how to do it. They're going to be out doing whatever that thing is. And did marketing for it and was making this kind of money. And here I am, excuse me, I dropped this. Here I am, this kid holding my pen, writing it down, and my hand was shaking. My hand was shaking because I was so excited because here I had I'd been writing this book for three years. <laughs> I had made no money. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I was like, 20 pages? I'd probably written, you know, three, 400 pages in my life at that point. And I thought, well, this is a new world. But you know, if someone doesn't tell you the awareness, that possibility, if I'm not sitting in that chair at that moment, I'm probably not here with you today. Because I was in a situation where people were talking about what they were doing. I was like, what? That's what Influencer Summit's gonna feel like for you. Because people are gonna come up here. Let me just kind of create a, 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 a little breakdown here. Like, what is this awareness of possibility? Well, you're gonna have people who are gonna come up here and they're gonna share how they started their business. Now, some of them, sure, maybe they sell things like a book, or maybe they sell things like a course, or maybe they sell things like coaching. Maybe they sell things online like a subscription or a membership. Maybe they sell things online like just a digital asset, like a download, digital download, right? So they might sell all these things. They might also add an event. Okay. I would say just never buy coaching from anybody, but especially don't buy coaching from someone about, you know, how to be successful in life or whatever. 
unless that person has been successful at something other than coaching and self-help writing, okay? It, they need to have some other success story, okay? It can't just be that. Or a mastermind. They might do brand deals and sponsorships. They might get that ad revenue. There's all these different things that you can do to monetize, but if no one ever showed you that or said you could do that, you don't have the menu. It's like walking into the restaurant of opportunities of life and they don't got a menu there. Okay, but it's more like if you walked into the restaurant and you were just you were just so confused about you know and then you just walk out because you didn't couldn't order anything because you don't know what you could order when what you could do is go into the restaurant and say oh sorry i didn't get a menu can i get a menu please and then they would hand you one okay that that's that's kind of what what you could be doing i feel like if you are not if you are not finding these ways to monetize the social media thing that you're doing then you might just not be cut out for this because this information should be something that you can find in like five seconds it really should it's in every tutorial thing it's in the uh it's in the um creator academy it's in there it's in all the help files for all the platforms all these things are okay so i i, I don't know if you're unable to locate this information on your own i just i don't see that there's a lot going to be a lot of potential for you and you're wondering why you're not breaking through and let me tell you why most of you don't break through if you're not breaking through in terms of like reaching a a growth you know thing it's probably because you're trying to monetize before you've tried creating good content and this is not judgmental because you're like, what, Brennan's talking to me. Um, I've been doing this for 16 years. I've trained a million entrepreneurs and influencers online now through our programs. Over a million, right? Over three million people have taken my courses, just to give you an idea if you're new to my world. So when I say something like you, I'm not- So you don't consider the one million, you don't consider the three million that took your course to be trained? Okay. Like judging you at your house. I'm saying the industry. I know this is the industry data. Most of the industry data shows the reason you don't break through is you don't just choose one and do marketing behind it. That's it. What you do is you go, oh, she's doing all 10 of these things. And you go, I guess I got to do all 10 of these things. And then you get overwhelmed. So does your audience. No one wants to follow someone who's just trying to sell and doesn't have good content. You see her doing all 10 of these things. And you think, I can't do all 10 of these things. You know, I, I got a family. I got kids. I got this other job. I just need a side hustle. But she's doing 15 things. I can't do all of those. So I guess I can't have a side hustle. This is going to be a moment in your life where you either choose in the next couple months of your life to focus on one thing, make that one thing work or not. Like, if you're not earning what you want in your life, the hardest thing to know, but also the best thing to know is you don't need to go do 50 things. In fact, doing 50 things is why you're spread so thin. Why your wallet is so thin. When you realize, I gotta do this one thing. And I'm speaking from personal experience too. Here was my thing. Um, when you look at this, the way that I began, I didn't try to do all these. My first thing, if you broke mine down, first thing was a book. I was going to launch a book. I was going to attach a course to that thing. And then eventually, I was going to do an event because I like to teach. And I like people. I like to see people like in real life. You know, I miss people. I miss your faces. <laughs> um, I like seeing you there. I'm actually a real person in a real room. Can you guys see me? I, sometimes I think, am I living in a simulation now? I don't know. Am I living in a simulation now, he says, as the fake applause begins. No, but I see in the chat, at least. Let us know in the chat. Where are you from today? Where are you watching from today? I can see a big old chat board over here. I don't Boy, this must just be a formula that they do for all of these virtual events, man. Of you guys can see it. 
But I would love to see, like, where are you guys at? Where are you at up here? We've got New York, Africa, London. <laughs> Salt Lake Courthouse. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. That's hilarious. Look at that. UK, Vancouver, Columbia, South America, Connecticut, Michigan. Boo, we're behind you. What the H? Cape Town is in the house. Seattle, Australia, Hawaii, Germany, let's go. Wow, see, we see that uh, Arizona still can't spell, so. Mexico, Ontario, Puerto Rico's in the house. Utah, Denmark, Italy, Luxembourg. Look at this, guys. This is just in one of our zoo. Man, look at all that Utah. It's that MLM energy, man. Jesus, God almighty. Room, room. Let's go. How cool is this? Yeah, it's so cool how um, you can just get, you, you can connect with people on the information superhighway of the World Wide Web. I think that we should like, I think that we should bring back some of the computer terms that we've abbreviated since you know, technological advancement. Like, I think we should bring back, like, microprocessor and microcomputer, you know? Like, this, this, uh, this M1 Max microprocessor equipped MacBook Pro portable microcomputer is the perfect machine for serving as an on-ramp to the information superhighway of the World Wide Web. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You know, sometimes I think, am I just here by myself? You you are here by yourself. Now you're here. The sound effects. Ha 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 ha. Hi, world. I appreciate you. Love that the world is here. Yeah, isn't it amazing how the internet works? Israel, Toronto, Netherlands, Nairobi, Laguna Beach, Iowa. Come on, let's go. Char let's go. Charlotte, West Palm, Scottsdale. I mean, listen, Vegas, baby. You are not alone in your house. You yeah, you are, though. You are not alone learning this. So why do I share all this? I'm coming back. For me, it began as simple, a book, a course, and an event. And I didn't try to do them all at once. I was just learning. But let me share this with you. I was going to sell that book because that first book didn't work. And I went broke because I didn't learn marketing. I didn't learn everything you're going to learn here at an Influencer Summit. And like, sorry, spoiler alert, most of what you are going to learn here is that you need to know what to do. You need to get some training on it. You need to get the courage to overcome your fear and your judgment and your shame. You need to believe in yourself. Get going and be around a community of people. That's what most of it's going to learn. So much of this is psychology. Raise your hand if you follow that. So much is just, it's in your head. It's literally... Especially in the influencer space, it's in your head. Listen, if you're if you're here at this thing, if you're thinking you need courses for this, you're already not off to a great start. You just don't have the intuition for it. You're embarrassed about your background or your camera or your voice or your That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your content is good, people will find you and people will like you and you can kind of improve on the technical stuff over time. Your hair, all these things that literally you should stop caring about and instead you should say, what's the thing I'm gonna create that's of value? I swear, I hate the way he uses the word value. And what am I gonna sell? Don't sell anything until you have an audience. And just determine that and fight for that. For me, it was a book. But for those who know that story with me and my lady, I wrote that book. It didn't work. I went broke. 
And I had to make the decision to either move back home with my parents as a, what was I, 28, 29 year old kid. It's not the end of the world. And uh, I'd already lived on my friend's couches for long enough. And my then girlfriend said, well, come in, move in with me. So we moved in together. And for months and months and months, I was so shamed that she was buying the groceries. She was paying the rent. And I had no money to contribute. Okay, this is not anything to do with gender. My, uh, my objection here is that, uh, sorry, months and months and months and months of you not having any money? What are you doing? I mean, at a certain point, I, like I get it, you wanna write a book. But at a certain point, after a while, if you're freeloading off of your partner and like you're not really doing it, you're not really helping at all because you don't have any kids, so you're not even married and you're living off of her, uh, at a certain point, you're gonna need to just find a job that you can do for a while and just do that so that there's money coming in and you can try to write the book in your spare time. Like, but you're like that, that's outrageous. That is outrageous. Don't ever put up with that. I had quit a good job. I had a good job and I quit. What? Oh. Oh, fuck you. You quit. Don't ever. Don't ever. Do not ever quit a job unless you have something else lined up that is guaranteed to bring in money or is already bringing in money. Do not ever just quit a job without something else lined up. It's, it's, it's so, it's, it's a, just a very bad move. <sighs> and he says it's a good job. Cool. Oh my God. If the girlfriend should have left, girlfriend should have kicked him out. You quit your job and now months and months and months later, I'm having to pay for everything for you. No, no. Quit it to write a book and it didn't work. And I got down on myself. Oh, poor you getting everything paid for. Her. And every day the phone is ringing in her apartment. I have to pick it up and they're calling for me because I don't have a cell phone anymore. I don't have a phone. Well, is it her cell phone or are we talking about landline here? And so they're calling and it's people asking for money, the creditors, not paying my bills. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't pay your bills. I'm going bankrupt. And I get down. You're going bankrupt. Down on myself. Oh, you poor thing. If only there were some way that you could have not ended up in this situation. If only there were something you could do. Really? I, and you know what? I'm sorry, but answering the phone about the mess that you created is one of your duties that you should be doing. If you're sitting here at home while your girlfriend's at work and she's paying for everything. Okay, that's the least you could do is answer the fucking phone. So for months and months, I sit there. I pretend to write. I go to the cafes in San Francisco, and I sit there around the famous cafes where the famous writers were, because like, if I just get where the famous writers wrote, and I have the tea and the croissant like they had, uh, it'll just, the inspiration will happen. Never did. And I just sat there, and then I wouldn't write that much, and then I'd fool myself, you know, I need more inspiration. So I'd go on a walk around Fort Mason, and I'd just, I'd convince myself that what I needed, what I needed to do, was just get more inspired. Versus do the work. And then, one night, I'm sitting at this little fold-out table in my girlfriend's apartment, 
And next to me is her bed, and I've got all my vision boards, research, paperwork, dreams. Are you fucking kidding me? You are such a loser. And bills on the bed. Wait, 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 what? Okay, let me get this straight. So she's working all day. You, meanwhile, sit at home and or go out to internet cafes or whatever, and you don't work. And you can't even keep the apartment clean. Are you fucking kidding me? That's your job right now, is keeping the apartment clean. Since you're not doing anything that's bringing in money, that's the least you could do. That is the least you could do. She comes in the bedroom, and I just remember the night because I was, she came in, I pretend I was, I was, I was kind of daydreaming about something, being not focused. And she came in, I was like, oh, yeah. so I pretend I'm writing, you know, doing the. You disgust me. Why don't you pretend to get a job? Work. And, you know, look at me, I'm working hard, honey. Yeah, typing is such hard work. And she walks in, and she doesn't want to disturb me, so she, you know. And she goes to go to bed. Maybe she just didn't want to talk to you. Because she just realized what a loser you were. And she goes to get under the covers of the bed. And I'm trying to pretend to writing. And then I look over. You know, she probably knew that you weren't writing. And she just didn't know what to do with you. And I see my lady sleeping under my bills. Then pick them up and clean up the apartment. Why don't you actually make yourself even the slightest bit useful in this relationship? What a loser. Like literally, she's got under the covers and the bills are on top of her. And you don't see a problem with this. I mean, a problem in terms of you failing as a, at minimum, stay-at-home person. And I love this woman. Do you, though? And I see that, and I don't know what it was, but something in my heart just went... <sighs> that should have happened months and months and months and months and months ago when you weren't bringing in any money and it still wasn't working and you still weren't working. Because none of us want our own inaction to be the cause of financial struggle for our families or the people that we love. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stop crying. It's not your inaction that caused the financial difficulty. What caused the financial difficulty, let's get this crystal clear, what caused the financial difficulty was you quitting a, quote, good job unquote, without another stream of income lined up. That's what caused it, not an action. It was caused by a very specific action that was very stupid to do. And in that moment, I got real with that. We didn't have no money because I wasn't doing the work. You didn't have money because you quit a job without something else lined up. I was faking it. I was showing up at the cafes. I was looking for inspiration instead of, here's the plan. I had the plan. I bought the course. I the fact that he spent money on courses while he's not bringing any money in and he's just pretending to write, what a loser. Good God, girlfriend, have, a, have some self-respect. I already had these people saying, this is how to do this, but I wasn't doing it. Why? Because I came from nothing and I was comfortable having nothing. Who heard what I just said? Yeah, I heard you, but it was still dumb. See, many of you, you're in survival mode and people think survival mode's so bad. But survival mode is also homeostasis. Uh, well, I mean, all modes are homeostasis because if they weren't, then you would die. Survival mode is also your comfort zone. 
no, it's not. I'm not comfortable when I'm in survival mode. I'm like super anxious and super tense. Some of you can survive being broke for a real long time. Doesn't bother you at all. Well, you have to. And besides, a lot of people make it look like they don't, like it doesn't bother them, but it does. You're used to it. Yeah, being used to it doesn't mean that it doesn't bother you. Because that's what you came from. That's what I came from. What else are you going to do? My parents, we grew up in the poverty line. Four kids. We had nothing. I had no idea. Right? There was no awareness again to people having new cars or something like that. Well, where do you think the used cars come from, buddy boy? You're a really stupid kid. And so guess what? I could have gone on years being broke. Okay, so his, his whole theory here is that poverty exists because people just don't know about a more affluent lifestyle. They, they just don't know that it exists. They're like, what is that? But I wasn't going to allow her to be broke. Sometimes there is something outside of you that you need to connect with. Yeah, and that something is indeed.com. And that is the very moment you'll become successful. No, I, I would say it probably is around when you, when you are, are, are reaching that goal. This is just kind of step zero. It really is. Stop crying. It really is. That will be the moment. You'll be able to look back at that moment. I remember that moment. I can't even tell the dang story without getting emotional. Be Do you want us to leave? Because seeing this person that I love sleep under my bills, maybe I didn't have a vision for dreams. I, didn't I never wanted a car or a, a fancy plane. I never knew we'd have all the abundance we have in our lives now. I didn't know we'd be able to give millions of dollars and help people all around the world. I had no idea. Any of that. But what I did know was that circumstance that I had helped create. You did not help create it. You created it. You created it when you quit your job without something else lined up, when you exhausted your supply of friends that who would let you crash at their place and then continued to not seek an, another job. And then you continued for months and months and months and months and months and months to make no money, spend money on courses, and then not even having the work ethic to at least tidy up your fucking bills and paperwork around her bed in the apartment that she is letting you live in. Are you fucking kidding me? That's not helping create it. You created it all on your own. What, who else created it for you? Nobody else. Was no longer allowable. Uh, okay, well, I would say it wasn't allowable from like the first month but whatever that a psychological switch went off in my head and go okay and in my research we call this psychological necessity it now became necessary to change necessary to do something beyond me for somebody else because most people what we'll do is we'll sit and we'll stew and we'll say and stay in our comforts but then one day Something's going to push us outside that comfort zone. Maybe it's demand. Maybe I had to go broke. And the demand of those people calling me and bugging me and harassing me and stressing me, that, that comfort pushed me in demand and helped me kind of change a little bit. Maybe for some of you, you just have to hear what I'm saying today and you just need a new another level and permission of esteem to care for yourself again, to honor yourself to follow your passion, to put yourself out there, to challenge yourself. And it's, it's an esteem situation. And the thing, though, that will break it all through for you is service. That desire to go beyond your comforts, just the demands of life, just the idea of who you are, to be of service to somebody else. And I know we live in a culture that says, make a worldwide impact and global. Maybe service to you is just your partner or your spouse. Maybe your service is just paying for the kid's school. Maybe your service is just helping people in your local community. 
maybe your service is a Zoom where 10 people show up and you literally just do group coaching with them and help them. Well, it certainly makes more sense what they're talking about when they say service, if that's what service is. <laughs> I mean, maybe your service to your partner could be at least throwing those bills that are sitting on top of her while she's trying to sleep. You could throw those in the recycling bin or something. I don't know, maybe digitize them. And out of the 10 people, one of them hires you one-on-one -on -one and pays you as a coach. Maybe that's it. And maybe that's okay to start there. You should write this down. Don't be embarrassed to be seen starting small. Don't be embarrassed to be seen starting small. I mean, duh, yeah, that's how it starts. That's, that's normal. Like, none of this is anything you can apply, is it? I do so many things, not a million people show up. I do some, I can't believe how many people show up. The thing isn't about the numbers. It's about the actual authentic impact you get to have with people. If I get to, if one person today heard something I shared, maybe that would be good enough for today. Maybe you can be satisfied with being a person of service. But sometimes that service is to you and your family now. It's about, okay, we, we've been comfortable here. And a lot of people, you can be comfortable in complete squalor. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Like, I, this, I don't understand why our culture forgot that. A lot of people who never had anything because they never knew to have something else, they never had an example, they never got taught how, they're truly stuck. Yeah, they're just those ignorant savages who just don't know about our civilized way of life. I feel like that's less of a thing about, I feel like this is kind of a classist thing to say. Uh, squalor doesn't usually... I, like, it can mean that it's because of poverty, but it could, like, I would define, like, okay, like, Jeffree Star's mansion is squalid because, like, there's just there's shit everywhere and, like, it's just a wreck. See, but he has a lot of money and expensive things. It's just, he's a slob. They're truly stuck. I'll give you one last framework here today that I'll just share. And if anything has helped you today, would you just put it in the chat? What's one idea, one truth, one aha, one thing I said that resonated with you? I'd just love to see it in the chat. We capture this so I can keep learning. Just one idea. Yeah, I got nothing. Something you're like, oh, that was good. I needed that. Okay, this was helpful. Because here's something else. I'll give you another simple framework behind instruction. Something that changed the course of my life forever. And you're going to laugh at it. It's so simple. I just didn't know. I didn't know, and I'll be talking about this, especially tomorrow morning as part of the summit. I didn't know this other thing that everybody was doing called, I'll just write this over here, called payment flow. You all know, who doesn't know what payment flow is? Raise your hand. You don't know what payment flow. Okay, I didn't know this either. This blew my mind. Okay, here I am. I'm trying to sell a book, I'm trying to break through. And then I find out all these other guys got this thing called payment flow. And this payment flow or a funnel or average or at cart value, it's all the same thing. What they were doing is they would, maybe they'd sell a book, but then on the checkout page, they'd have an order bump. And then they'd have a one-click upsell. One-click upsell. And then they would have uh, you know, a thank you page upsell. Now, I know that's so basic. And some of you are like, of course, Brendan. You didn't know that? I'm like, I didn't know that. That most people, instead of selling that $20 PDF I talked about, well, the way that he became a multi-multi-multi-millionaire was he made sure he earned 40% more than most people with the same number of transactions by having upsells. That's called payment flow, right? Or at cart value. Okay, this isn't unique to online. There's always upsells happening at basically any place of business. So meaning he'd sell the $20 book, but then he'd you know, have on the checkout page an order bump that would allow him to offer, also say, hey, would you like to add this $7 report? 
That's called an order bump, right? Add the $7 report. Then before they're through checkout, it says, hey, would you also like to add this $49 online video course? And then on the thank you page, it say, hey, great. Thanks for buying my stuff. Just so you know, I also teach every single month as part of my membership. Would you like to sign up for my membership? Meaning every offer isn't a single offer. Every offer is the main offer, then the order bump, the one click, and the upsell. That means there's one, two, three, four offers. Yeah, mind blowing. This is all like very uh, internet marketing 101. At cart, meaning in the same, in the same transaction, right? They Who doesn't know what cart means? They give the credit card, they take the order bump, the one click, maybe another one click, and maybe a thank you page. I was like. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, if you have all that shit on your page and I, and I was considering buying something, uh, I'm going to exhibit a behavior called cart abandonment. Wait a minute. You know, because some of these guys and gals, they're getting 20% of people to take this order bump or higher. Some of these people, they're getting, depending on the price point here, they're getting, you know, 2 to 10% to take this one. Some people are getting another 2% here. Then in email follow-up, they get another 4% to buy something more in the next two weeks. Okay, definitely don't give a company like this your email. Okay, go to tempmail.org, like temp-mail.org. Okay, you can get a temporary disposable email address, you can see what comes into it, and then you can use it just once, and then it's gone, and it's not getting emailed to you at all. Or there's also, uh, if you're on Mac, there's a, there's a, a, a app called Tempbox in the App Store that will, it's like a full like little app on your Mac that will have a temporary email address and then you can just generate a new one whenever you want. It's much better than giving your real email address to people or to businesses. Even if it's just buying one of these things they didn't buy at cart. And they use a system like Kajabi, or there's tons of other things. You could use, you know, other programs, like ClickFunnels, a, a Wix, a, a Circle. There's so many other different programs. But they use something, I use Kajabi, to set this all up to earn more at cart. So what did that mean? Well, maybe they started this, remember this first thing, that's their main offer. They had a main offer. And then they had other things they offered with the main offer to make more money. Once they did that with some organic traffic, maybe from social media or from an affiliate promotion with somebody else, once they knew these numbers, then guess what they did? What did they do, everybody? Type in the chat if you know what they did after that. Maybe everyone knows this and I didn't know it. What do you think they did after that? Once they set up payment flow, what did they do in the chat? First one, right there, David, Nicole, Posey, run ads, reinvested it. Repeat, repeat. So these people who are just earning way more, well, they did it the first time. They ran just, they took their audience that they do have. And you will learn here at Influencer Summit a lot about building an audience. And they took their audience. They sold something. They had some upsell. They learned what those numbers were. And they said, this is working. Let's scale it. Let's keep running more social media to it. Maybe we'll add a YouTube channel or a podcast. Keep running people to it. Maybe we'll do an affiliate promotion with somebody else or just three friends promoting it with me. Learn the numbers. Great. Let's run some ads at it. Make it perform better. Then they said, well, let's add some more emails on the back end of this thing so people buy more stuff. That's just called payment flow or a funnel or you know, a full marketing campaign. Being the worst whatever you want to call it, that simple, goofy thing that I learned from a course, just like I learned from this guy about all these things I could do, that one thing changed the course of my career. You could have learned that from a Google search for free. Because now I could sell a book, but I could have other upsells along with it. And I wanted to have a course, as I told you about. I wanted to have an event. And then one day, on the thank you page, 
I started offering coaching. Sign up here for a free strategy call, and I'll talk with you for 45 minutes. And if I can help you, maybe you want to hire me as a coach. And all the a coach for what? How are you qualified? All of a sudden, I went from literally that moment where I'm sitting there watching the love of my life sleep under my bill. I can't believe you told this story once, let alone repeating this extremely embarrassing part of it. To learning these simple things I just shared with you. From seeing a potential, getting some instruction, having the courage to try and get over it. Being completely oblivious to the fact that I'm a complete parasite. Especially for somebody else. Believing that I can do it learning from a community, but those simple little things I just shared with you, zero dollars. Yeah, maybe I really can learn how to not live off of my girlfriend for months and months and months while I do nothing and just pretend to write and spend money on courses. Maybe, maybe I could, you know, maybe I could put these papers in the recycle bin. 18 months later, it made $4 million. 18 months. Now, this is my origin story. I don't know if you can earn anything. I don't know if you will ever try. I don't. I thought you said we would be successful. I don't know what you sell. I don't know. I'm in a room by myself. You could be a vampire for all I know. I don't even know where you're at. Okay, so he thinks vampires are real? I don't even know. Oh, so I'm not here to tell everyone, hey, you're all, I'm not that guy who's like, everyone becomes multimillionaires. No, most people don't because they will never do any of this. Yeah, it's their fault. They will listen. They will never even try if they try. All right, you're yelling now and I'm not liking it. One time they'll get discouraged. They'll shame themselves into stopping. They'll feel doubt and they'll feel so special in their own doubt that they'll stop without realizing successful people also feel doubt, but they don't take the doubt as a signal to stop. They take the doubt as a signal to learn and try and get developed and master yourself and develop skills. If you stop at doubt, you've already lost the game because doubt never goes away. So you'll always be stopped. I had doubt this morning. Mike and I were there 10 minutes before this whole thing started, changing up the code, trying to do something else, switching the page. Yeah, well, doubts are a lot less scary when you've got $4 million. Like, that's, you just, that's every day. Yeah, but your doubts don't matter the way that they do when you don't have a lot of money. If you stop at doubt, you lose life. <sighs> That's not true, though. If you stopped at doubt right now, you would still have a lot of money. And uh, the other thing is, is if people who don't have a lot of money don't stop at doubt, they could end up losing everything that they have. You're done. You've got to believe in yourself again. You've got to see potential. You've got to follow through. You've got to show up for yourself. And if you won't show up for yourself, show up for her or him or them or that service to the world. Uh, agree, but what I think you should do is get a job. Right now, a lot of people are really struggling because the last couple of years, they, they shut themselves off. They shut themselves down. They pulled themselves psychically, spiritually, socially, whatever you want to call it. They, 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 they went internal. They cut off that idea of adding value to the world. They cut off their spiritual energy. They cut off that desire to serve more people because they didn't see no people. Remember, if you don't see it, you can't dream it, you can't achieve it. Well, so many people. Well, they saw people virtually like this. I mean, and you're supposed to tell us that this is equivalent, so. People lost that awareness to possibility. Yeah, they forgot that more money existed. This summit is gonna bring that possibility back. This summit is gonna give you the tools, the ideas, the strategies. If anything, you just learned a lot right here. There's a menu of things you can do. You can sell courses and coaching, and subscription, digital downloads, events. Courses and digital downloads of what? You can put your brand out there, charge money. Brand of what?
money, earn ad revenue on the platforms. Lots of people know that. Now you know you can develop payment flow to make more money. Okay, you need something that people want to buy first. Lots of people know that. Now it's about courage. It's about consistency. No, I think it's still about you need to have something that people want. It's about deciding to serve somebody, to contribute beyond yourself. <sighs> Those are the breakthroughs. I'm still here 16 years later, still, after having taught so many millions of people, I'm still doing it. Why? Why? Because I like to be in a room by myself? No. no, because you need to increase the sales of your courses so that you can maximize your profits. No, because I want to have impact while I'm here. I no, you want to sell your courses and your books. I want people who, who are interested in what I was interested. I just wanted to create content. That you can sell. Coach people. Well, you could do that without selling a course. Get paid for it. Ah, uh, well, that's not being of service. That was it. Yeah, that's, that is how jobs work. It's not that fancy. Nope. Agree. My content was books, became, became one day blogs, became one day YouTube, became one day podcasts, became one day email newsletters, became one day live broadcasts. The content and how I created the content and where it went, that changed and evolved over time, just as the internet did, right? Just as social media did. But I decided I was going to make money from it. It was a decision. It was going to be a career. Not a hobby, not a thing. I was like, no, no, I'm going to earn at this. And that was a real decision, which is a big deal for me because I had money tie-ups in my brain from where I grew up. I had to just go, okay, I'm going to earn at this because I have people who love me and care for me and I need to serve them. And then I started connecting with more and more clients and I started realizing, like, I love these people. I can't believe that they, they struggle with the same things I did too. Oh, this is so easy to go over. It just takes a lot of consistency. You got to learn. You got to invest in yourself. You got to invest in your campaigns. You got to keep building and trust. You know, I'm, I'm on year 16. So don't look at my brand and say, all these things. Go, I got to do all those. Start with one. Earn on it. Double down on it. Build it. Keep serving, keep showing up, keep doing it for others. I promise if you have that heart of service, if you decide to be a role model along the way, if you decide to challenge yourself along the way. If Imagine thinking that having a click funnel is being of service. If you decide to build community along the way, you'll have your breakthroughs. Don't worry if they come in one month. Don't worry if they come in six weeks. Show up and again and again. And again, and again. And then one day you're like, wow, I got the car, I got the house, I got. Or you're like, oh man, I'm out of money because I gave it all to Brendan Bouchard. Bouchard. I got the family, I got the dream, I got the thing. And you know what you're gonna wanna do more of? Serve. Cocaine. And that's how you know the true ones in the industry. That's how you know. I hope you enjoyed my first session, ladies and gentlemen, today. I appreciate you. What a kickoff to Influencer Summit. Fake applause again. Let us know again where you're tuning in from if you're just joining us. I appreciate each of you. I'm so excited. So do you see how long that went on and gave essentially no useful information that wasn't already pretty common knowledge? Any of the concrete things that were discussed were just things that everybody either already knows or that is is just the first Google result when you ask that question. So I think if you look back, you can kind of see what the um, sort of effectiveness of this type of content as a means of getting you to buy another product is. It, it's this fact that it does a couple of things. First of all, it, it constantly makes it sound like they have information that you need and that if you get this information, you will succeed in whatever it is you're trying to obtain this knowledge for. So it, it makes it sound like they, they have it, they definitely know some secret or something, and you know that the secret will help you. 
and crucially, it it doesn't give you this this supposed secret because first of all, it doesn't exist, and second of all, then they wouldn't be able to sell you anything else. They never give you the secret, but they make it sound like it's it's just out of reach. You're so close to having it. It's it's just not right here. It it constantly gives you this feeling that the that the meat of the content is 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 coming right up. It's coming. It's coming shortly. Like it's gonna like, any second now. We're gonna arrive at the uh, juicy part of this presentation. At the at the the main course that we were after but it never comes it, it's always just out of reach and it's just behind that next purchase it's just behind that next purchase because that's all they're trying to do they're trying to get you to make another purchase they're not trying to get you to be successful because well they'd run out of buyers that way <laughs> so you know whatever but at least at least i don't sell 20 dollars pdfs all right everybody i've been mac peace out Bye!